Welcome in, everyone. We are in NFL Week 5. It's BTB Analytics. Kevin, Seth, and Steve here with you. As usual, we got some matchups. We got some data. We got some off the numbers, picks, value analysis, all of it for you. Let's get into the show. Give a damn about a hater when I feel like it. Not today. Not today. Not today. Not tomorrow. Get out my way. Please, I'm trying to get paid. Not today. All right. Appreciate everyone being here with us. Don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're here doing this stuff every week, trying to bring you guys nuance, data, value, discussion, all of it. Try to help you make smarter bets and the like. So let's get into some matchups first. We got a lot of lot to discuss for this for this week, guys. But I want to start. Why not? Let's go to Thursday night football. We got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Our number says this is minus one in favor of the Bucs, so no value from where we sit um, at the at the moment, but on either side. So, Seth, I guess I want to kick it to you to start. Um, I, I this this is another one of those Thursday night matchups where I, the the league seems like it's just very good at picking weird and potentially non eventful, non exciting <laughs> matchups for Thursday night. I don't know how they keep doing stinkers. It. I think you mean to call them. Yeah, it's really impressive at this point. But um, I guess, I guess, what, what, what's your what's your what's your analysis of this game? Because from from wh- what I was researching or thinking about earlier today is that <clears throat> the Bucks on defense they are the worst against the rush, and the Falcons aren't very good rushing the ball either. Yeah. One other thing, Bucks are the only, are only one of three teams through the first four weeks of the season to have a positive pass rate over expected. So they like to throw the ball. They that's that's what their identity kind of is at this moment in time. So is there like is there a scenario here where you see you see Atlanta figuring out that Tampa Bay actually sucks against the run and, and <laughs> starting to run the ball and and win a game here? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good point. And, and to your point, we actually added this this week. So you'll see that last column. We've added the pass rate over expected. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know this. When you ask me what I think about this game, when I was like researching this, looking up the data, looking at what the model has, it's just like question mark after question mark after question mark. Who are both of these teams? I, we've just seen a lot of variance from both of them. We have this huge blemish on the record for Tampa Bay going up against Washington, a rookie quarterback. Tampa Bay to me is interesting because going into the season currently the current form we're seeing Tampa Bay is for at least on my bingo card the complete opposite of the team I would have thought I'm getting what I mean by that is I'm getting a eighth overall passing offense ninth rushing offense but then defensively they're actually quite poor 11th pass offense but 28th rushing defense Um, sorry uh, Tampa Bay is the 11th passing defense and the 28th worst passing rushing defense. So they're bad on they're good on offense but they're bad on defense. The opposite of my my bingo card, right? When when I think of Tampa Bay, I'm really thinking of this really good defense. That's really not the case this season. And I don't know if that's enough for Atlanta to get going. The other part of this is Atlanta's kind of been a luck box. Everyone wants to talk about that non-call pass interference about Kansas City, but they don't want to talk about the pass interference call they got last week in, of New Orleans. They don't want to talk about the crazy Sirianni end of the game of the Philly uh, or the Eagles game where they end up winning. Um, so I don't know what we're getting here. Tampa Bay seems to be the lazy dots here to connect. They, they've been good, so they'll stay good. I'm still not sure what we're getting out of Atlanta. To your point, though, about running the ball, 23rd for Atlanta on rush um, EPA on offense. Bijan, I think, is 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 slated to be out here. So does that num- does those numbers get better? Do they get worse? I know it's kind of a two headed back system there. It's not only Bijan, but I don't know. I'm confused. To your point of run rate and pass rate over expected, Atlanta runs the ball six percent run rate over expected, um, but Tampa Bay throws the ball a lot three percent run rate uh, pass rate over expected. So to me, if both of these kind of teams just be who they are on paper, you'd think Tampa would win by a field goal. Did you sorry, just real quick, did you see that that Bijan is out? Or I maybe, saw maybe that out. on sports science, our guy, our go-to guy, he's okay, showing yeah. that he's he's injured, he's on the injury report, and that he I don't know if he's out, but he's mm. he's on the injury report. Okay. All right. That's 
That's interesting, yeah, because I was looking. I was looking at some some props early today in in the market, and you couldn't find hardly anything on Bijan. So that makes a little bit more sense now. So, all right, I don't know, Steve. What, what, what do you think? Because yeah, is this gonna is this shape gonna be another stinker, as Seth calls it? Um, I don't know about stinker. It's definitely not highlight, right? I, I'm getting on that, but I, I think I like the Bucks here. I mean, I really do. I mean, I Seth laid it out perfectly. I mean, Atlanta is really two lucky plays away from being 0-4, right? And so you look at this, and what are you really getting? We asked ourselves last week, is Atlanta good? You know, coming off, you know, their 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 win against Philly, and then we saw what they did against the, the Saints, but they didn't score a single offensive touchdown against New Orleans, right? And you look at their offensive EP at negative 4.8. Like, this is a team that – you know, give Kirk credit and and getting the wins, you know, on that drive. But this is a team. You take a step back; they really have not been putting the pieces together. And so you look at the Buccaneers' offense. You know, they're not world burners, right? But they're they're consistent and they're better. You throw away you throw away that one Broncos game. We saw what they did against Philadelphia. So for me, it's a lot easier to trust a Tampa Bay team who we more consistently seen them be a positive offensive team. We more consistently seen Baker Mayfield move the ball, move the chains as he's supposed to do versus Atlanta team where you don't know what you're getting and you can't really rely in my mind on luck or these high variance scenarios for Atlanta to keep winning, let alone covering. So I don't know for yeah. me, it's kind of a, I feel a lot more comfortable back in the Buccaneers here because I, I know, I believe I know what I'm getting. Okay. Yeah, this one, I, this one is, I, I wish I had a hot take on this one, but this one just like screams, the good play is no play in this game. Like, I just don't know. Yeah, save your money. <laughs> yeah. Save like, it buy, for buy, buy, buy Bitcoin at 9 a.m. and sell it at, at 10 p.m. And just, that's your gamble for the, like, you, you, you're literally just like, this is just, I mean, look, I think a lot of, I think a lot of casual betters are just going to see, this is one of those like bucks. His bucks are dogs, right? Two point dogs. Yeah, I think that's I think that's correct. Yeah. What what is it? What do you call it? What is this called? Not reverse lineman. What's the lie thing that everyone makes? We were just talking about on college, Steve. Trap, trap line. This alert. is a trap, trap line. line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, one and a half. This point is dogs. a classic trap line. That's what people are gonna say. I mean, I don't know what the fuck that means, quite honestly, but you're gonna get trapped no matter what if you bet this game, in my opinion. Okay. Fair enough. All right, we're gonna let's let's we got nothing else. We're gonna move on from this game. We got a good matchup though. Moving into the Sunday slate, I think one of the first ones up uh, early game. We're going Bills and Texans, three and one versus three and one. So this one, this one's interesting. A true toss up from uh, not only our perspective, what we make the number of pick them, and kind of the market's perspective is is floating around at one basically right now. So we don't have value on either side from what we model out, but I want to get. I want to get your, I guess, contextualization of, of this matchup, Seth, because if not for the commanders who are just basically breaking all of the EPA charts and making everyone else look average, Bills are still one of the, and number two uh, offense across many, many main metrics yeah. here. Yep. Um, overall EPA being per play being one of them. Yeah. Now the Bills are bad against the rush. Um the Ravens game didn't help to that end either, but you know Houston, for 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 what it's worth, they are third worst in rushing, mm-hmm. and I th- I think Joe Mixon's still going to be out. Yeah. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. So right. yeah, okay. So I guess what, what my my expectation here is that there's going to be a lot of throwing and a lot of points. Do you agree with that? I guess I don't, um, because if you look at who these teams are, right? If you look at the run, the pass rate over expected, both teams are opting to run the ball as their primary kind of mo. I'm with you here. Does Houston try to use this Buffalo run defense as kind of get right spot for their rushing offense? Houston currently is the 12th passing uh, EPA team on offense, but rushing the ball, like you said, they're pretty abysmal. I have them as the 26th um, best or worst, however you want to say that. But again, the Bills are the 26th worst passing or sorry, rushing defense. So to me, there's opportunity that maybe that's how Houston can kind of control this game. And then on top of then CJ Stroud playing well through the air. So I don't fully disagree. Obviously, I'm not trying to indicate that they're not going to throw the ball at all in this game. But it seems like they're trying to lean on the run first. 
And this might be a spot maybe they lean more into that than they than quote unquote they norm, normally would. And I don't know that we've seen data that Buffalo can stop the run. I mean, even the Cardinals were had a lot of success week one against them. That's to me a concern for this defense. They are very what I would say undersized. I mean, this is a really small team, and it it was very apparent in that in that um Baltimore game. I mean, Baltimore could do whatever, however they wanted on the ground, and that was interesting. Um, I don't know. I I don't have a good spot on what this this game is, and I I'm really concerned is not the word I would use. Um, but I have some question marks on C.J. Stroud. Are we seeing that sophomore slump, that sophomore regression? And I don't even know if those terms are able are, are fair enough to say. We saw him struggle against pretty much a team that everyone struggled with so far, which is Minnesota. And then he had a pretty impressive late drive there in yeah. the Jacksonville game. But this team is mediocre as far as their EPA numbers, if you look at yeah. offense and defense, and specifically offense. But yet they've, you know, CJ specifically has found a way to kind of over overperform that mediocre EPA. And so is that something that's sustainable? I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest with you, but it's something that, you know, he's not coming out looking like an MVP, right? And I'm not sure that that's even a fair assumption to who he would be or who he should be in his second year. But to me, there is a little bit of a discrepancy between who this team is on a per play basis and the results that we saw last year. And then maybe what we're going to see for the rest of this year, because the Buffalo bills offensively are definitely one of the best teams. So to me, this, if it gets a shootout, I don't know if Houston can keep up. Yeah, and I don't even know if it can get to a shootout. I mean, we talked about this Texans matchup, what was it, uh, two weeks ago, right, when we were on the Texans, or we were on the Vikings against the Texans, and we talked about, yeah, sure, the Texans at that point, they're 2-0, and but they gone against, you know, a stuttering offense in the Colts and Anthony Richardson, and then the Bears offense, you know, RIP. You know, those are two, two real things that we didn't know how – could be really getting in. Then we saw going up against Vikings defense, which was far more stout. And you see Sam Darnold doing things that both those other offenses couldn't. And what do you know? They got smoked, right? 34 to 7. And so for me, I see a lot of the same struggles and issues that came up in that Vikings game going to present themselves in this Bills game. And we talk about how the Bills can't stop the run, but they damn sure can stop the pass. Negative 0.34 pass EPA yeah. per play this season. Tied number one for for the, you know this four game sample or five game sample, so I I'm not really sold that this is going to be the sort of shootout game. I'm not sold that CJ Stroud's going to have a lot of success, and then quite frankly, I'm not quite understanding the market so far. At this being a pick 'em, I, I, I get the Bills just got blown out, and that was not a good a good look. But they got exposed at their weakness. That's what Baltimore does, right? They run the ball and they couldn't stop Derrick Henry for anything. So. I don't know. I, I don't want to call it the bounce back, you know, a bounce back game or a bounce back spot thing that gets overused, but I do see the Bills kind of handling this fairly easily. Yeah, that, that's interesting. We'll, we'll we'll see it a little bit later too, but we'll, we'll, the Texans are basically the definition of mid through yeah. through five weeks of the season. <laughs> yeah, they are. And and to your point about CD Stroud earlier, Seth, like I had a very similar thought. I'm like, how is he doing compared to last year? And he is actually he finished last season the 16th number 16 quarterback in terms of net epa and that's exactly where he lands right so now. far through five weeks of the season you know so it's not i i don't yeah it's not that he's regressed per se but i think relative to expectations and mvp yeah. aspirations all yeah. that sure I'll, I'll 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 meet you in the middle and, and kind of agree with you there so yeah this this one will be interesting again markets at a toss-up right now so should it should at least uh, should at least be a good game. So so, we'll so it's what the maybe what the market's picking up right now is that Buffalo is a pass funnel, or uh, sorry a run funnel like run the fuck out of the ball and mm -hmm. so CJ Stroud design he's not really design runner but boots ways to get him open scrambles are going to be on the table like maybe this is this is the MVP game we see that maybe everyone's thinking maybe happens for Josh maybe. is maybe a little bit more probable uh, setup for CJ I don't know this one's. I don't know. This is all type of gross. Yeah. This is this is this is no doubt when we post the clip of this, whatever it gets clipped up, clip Beatty to be, we're gonna see both sides telling us the other side is one hundred percent. You know, we're wrong right. no matter what we say. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll book market and come back and say, Oh, this aged so yeah. poorly. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, all good. <laughs> all right. This uh that that's one of the that's one of the main Sunday slate games. Um 
weird i'm not saying weird matchups but not a lot of a lot of good marquee ones outside of the even even the primetime matchups so let's move into sunday night though we got cowboys and we got steelers all right we make the number two this was at a one and a half at open so we don't show any value on either side here but um Steve, I gotta, I, I, I want to get your take on this because I, I feel like you have this take coming already. But <laughs> who, who in their right mind, not I, would have thought that the Steelers with Justin Fields would be a top ten passing EPA team through f- first four weeks of the season? Shout out Justin Fields. Maybe it is the system in Chicago that failed him. But looking into this matchup specifically, one other point, and I want to get your take on it is. The Steelers' defense is kind of living up to its kind of old namesake, if you will. They are third best against the rush, so really good, really stout against the rush. And the Cowboys are actually second worst in rushing the ball, from what I see, from what I see. So is this like, is this a situation where the the um, the Cowboys are a uh, a pass funnel team? Or what do we think? What do you think this matchup is gonna is gonna is gonna look like here? That the Cowboys are a pass funnel team. Sorry. Well, because sorry because they are no. I make sure. I, I guess a run. Yeah, they're a run funnel. The run funnel yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred percent. Yes, one hundred percent. All the way. You talk about the last game. I, I got to push back a little bit. I, I don't think the last game is going to be gross. The the Bills versus Texans game. I think you know it'll be a fun watch. This game is going to be fucking gross by all means. I mean, this is going to be two <laughs> teams where it is going to be a struggle. We saw you know, Justin Fields. Like this is like this is the, the the perfect dichotomy, right? You have Justin Fields who looks like a terrible quarterback to the eye test. Does not flash. He doesn't get it done. Let's throw the ball a ton. But when you look at the actual advanced statistics, he's killing it. And then you look at Dak Prescott who throws the ball all over the field, right? Puts up these yards, yeah. puts up points or whatever statistically he's terrible right so it, it's, it's kind of really interesting to see these two styles collide here but i think you had a spot on i mean pittsburgh is one of the top teams in terms of epa per pass allowed on defense so again i expect Dak to struggle more and quite frankly i expect these these holes to open up for pittsburgh to run as a run funnel team all day long so um you know this is one i, I definitely expect um, these are two of America's greatest teams, right? America's teams versus the Steelers here. Um, I, I got I don't want to say it out loud. It's not my pick officially, but I feel pretty comfortable here with the Steelers um, coming back in. I know they, I know they had a, a heartbreak of a loss against the Colts. And shout out Joe Flacco, timeless Joe, coming back in and breaking <laughs> all our hearts. But, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't see the Cowboys pulling this thing off. I've lost all faith. Okay. Yeah, and I just want to clarify. I think I think I misspoke, but I think I said Cowboys were, were second worst rushing the ball. I meant second worst against, so they can't stop anybody. But to your to, to your point, Steve. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I I, I don't know, Seth. Any any. I mean, do you think that's spot on? I mean, again, we don't show any we don't show any value on this yeah. one. But yeah, th- this is really interesting because and I just want to re- repeat some of these numbers because it, it, it to me is it's 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 an interesting matchup. So. The Cowboys offense, 21st passing. And in Steve, you talked about Dak throwing it a lot. Steelers are the eighth best passing defense. So you'd think that there's going to be struggle there. Um, and when we look at the Cowboys defense, they're 10th rushing, but the Steelers are actually the second best um, p- rushing defense. So where is where are the Cowboys going to get the offense? It's it's a bit concerning. And and as you, you, you've said there, um, uh, Kevin, I mean, the Steelers are a top 10 (laughs) passing offense now let's not get ahead of ourselves because even the team is telling us who they are 10 percent negative 10 percent pass rate over expected meaning 10 percent run rate over expected this is a team that is running the ball a shit ton they don't want to throw the ball yeah they don't want to throw the ball but when they do he's efficient and 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 that's great but where do you see those numbers regress back to something more normal? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, and the reality is that's some of the brilliance of what that offense is going to have, right? His um, ability to scramble and make those kind of impromptu throws can pay off big. Now, is that something you can ha- you know hang your hat on you know week in and week out? I'm not sure. But I'm not sure if this is the game, <laughs> so to speak, where – you, you don't think Justin Fields is going to have success. We've talked about this. 
Dallas is very much a, a, a run funnel team. And this is what the Steelers do. And so do you just kind of see those better versions of fields, right? Is he able to scramble more and rush more and it opens up more? And is this the fields coming out party? It leans more to that than the Dak coming out party. We still have this Dallas team as the number three offense in our 15 game sample. This is the efficiency we've we've seen in past you know years and games, but they are very much not playing like that. And so when we're looking at the strengths of Pittsburgh's defense, it's hard for me to say this is the game where Dak gets right. This to me seems more of a fields party coming out party than anything else. You know, don't be uh, don't be shocked if that's what you see. You know, don't fields over huh? yardage. Fields over yardage, you know, scrambles. I, I don't even know what, how, how else can you kind of rush, 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 rush. And yeah. a lot of that impromptu stuff, it's only going to take maybe one explosive, you know, break of, uh, you know, breakdown of a play and, and you can get all of your, your rushing yardage for, for field. So it's something I'd be eyeing. Yeah, the the quarterback props or most props for all the Sunday matchups really haven't populated yet. But I I'm, I will be curious to see what the market kind of pegs Kind of pegs Justin Fields as in terms of his over under everything completion. I think a lot. Passing, I think a lot of a lot of rushing yards, rush attempts, all that yeah. type of stuff. Well, and, and attempts. I, I mean, 10, 10 carries, fifty five yards, two touchdowns was Justin Fields' rushing line last week. You you you, you can't tell me that he's Did not he going. What's that? Did he cover that? Did he? I don't know what I know what the line. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That that was his actual stat line. I know what the oh, problem oh, line oh, was. Oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah, could be could be another repeat for sure. Yeah, I think I think I think they know. I think they know the Cowboys suck at it. So we'll see. We'll see yeah. who, who's going to bend or break first. So should be it should be an interesting matchup. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be a dog. Fight. It's going to be a dog fight for sure. It's going to be it's going to be a lot yeah. of probably ugly football being played. But shut up. All right, oh, though. Okay. Sunday night football. Let's look ahead to Monday night football now. So Saints and the Chiefs. Poor, poor, poor Chiefs. Not really, actually, but <laughs> they they're just losing guys left and right here. So I, I guess my my question to to you, Seth, is like last year we saw this Chiefs team perform and and basically be this kind of dichotomy juxtaposition of their old self, where they won with defense and their their offensive numbers were down, quote unquote. Right? Is I mean, it, it, do you, do you think based off not only the, the all the injuries that they're dealing with, but if they're gonna if they're gonna win and cover this game, you know we make the number four. This was open at five, so we don't have any value on this game currently. But there's no other scenario, right? This has to be this has to be where they outperform on the defensive side, right? I, the the only wrote notes I wrote down is Mahomes is inevitable. Like when you start breaking down these numbers, you're just like, how the hell are they winning and covering? And it makes no sense. The, the Kansas City is an average team. 15th passing the ball, 8th rushing the ball, so they're, I guess, a little bit above average rushing the ball defensively. 14th against the pass, 6th against the rush. So in 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 the rushing field, they're good offensively, good defensively, yeah. um, but they're not world beaters. It's basically you have Mahomes. You just have the best quarterback, and he just makes shit happen. Now, with less options, with less um, you know, weapons, what does that look like? Are we... You know, Mahomes is inevitable. So if you just keep that in your back of your mind, or in a day from now, two days from now, breaking news, Devontae to Kansas City, like, is this crazy? And then the inevitability just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. The other thing I can say here for anyone that wants to be a Kansas City backer, when we talk about Mahomes being inevitable, we we measure something and calculate something called weighted EPA for um, for basically looking at certain plays plays that are more important for predicting teams to win or cover. When we look at weighted EPA, the Chiefs go from about the mid middle of the road offense to the fourth best offense. And this is, again, Mahomes is inevitable. He just does all these things that are kind of intangible. He scrambles. He just makes plays. And that's what this team is. And it's hard for me to forecast anything because it, how it, if Mahomes is inevitable. There's no... There's nothing I can do. There's no, like the model knows he's inevitable. You know, it's I think if you just use the raw numbers, you get a very different number here. New Orleans is one of the best teams in our model. Fourth, fourth passing, fourth rushing. 
defensively, yeah. fourth against the pass, 11th against the rush. I mean, this is a really good Saints team. I'm sure somehow Kansas City will win by a touchdown. You're probably not wrong, damn it. You're probably not wrong. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to your point, and and, and Steve, yeah, the New, Orle- New Orleans had that. New Orleans is still a, a good offense, and what they've been doing in the early go has been, <clears throat> yeah, relatively impressive, you know, still. But, like, I guess I'm glad to my point being I'm, I'm glad there's not value on the saints in this game because i would i would be like this would be one of those ones i'd be staring at and be like this is this is a donation so Mahomes is inevitable i don't know is there is there any i mean is there anything else is there really anything else to break down with this one yeah i mean you know for me that this is going to be I, one I'm, I'm glad it's not on our model play because it is my off the numbers week. I feel completely different about this. Um, yeah. The Saints are definitely this team who I'll, I'll give you credit where credit is due. The one concerning part you have here is it's two games in a row now where the all the opposing defense has found a way to shut them down. So are we seeing the Saints sort of regress back to who they really should have been all this time along? We saw insane positive variance the first couple of weeks of the season, or is this the Saints having negative variance? We're going to see them kind of regress back to what we saw to kick this season off. That is yet to be determined. So I will give you that in a time of can Kansas City's defense to uh, pick up. I will say, yes, Mahomes, you've heard me say on this podcast before, I hate betting against Mahomes. He is inevitable. He gets things done. We talked about it during the Super Bowl last year where, Seth, you brought up uh, looking at QB career EPA and like how much that QB factor weighs in. And Mahomes is like on a whole different planet than yeah. literally every other quarterback in the league today. Um, so that you know, give credit. I mean, give respect. I don't want to say I'm, I'm, you know, downplaying that. But for me, like the Chiefs, like this seems like the perfect time to kick the Chiefs while they are down, right? Travis Kelsey, mm-hmm. you know, had a decent game, but he's been having a down year. Isaiah Pacheco is out. Now Rasheed Rice is out. Like Mark, Mark Hollywood Brown is still out. He's yeah. when is he coming back, right? So mm-hmm. how many more pieces can the Chiefs lose? Before this chip starts to kind of sink a little bit, I'm not saying that this is the season's done, but I do think that this is a, a game the Saints can be competent enough to cover five and a half. If yeah, if there's ever a spot, maybe yeah, maybe this is it because this is this is probably the least talented team that Mahomes will have around him on offense when they, whenever they take the field on Monday. I don't know who the hell he's throwing the ball to. They call people up from the practice squad. Like, who is out there besides Kelsey? They're going to trade for Devontae. Yeah, that would be that, that would be such classic Chiefs, dude. I'd be so mad because they it's like the rich get richer. Shit. Yeah, that's the beauty of being rich. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Steve, you're talking about regression. I mean, this is look. I, I I'm glad you're on the train. At least I have another delusional person there with me. In our seventh, seven, uh, fifteen game sample. Kansas City, or I'm sorry, New Orleans is the seventh ranked offense. This is a team that in a large sample and a small sample is good. They're one of our top 10 teams. We've seen them blow teams out the first two games. We've seen them struggle. But have we just seen high variance for for the Saints? We saw them pick themselves on a 50-yard run that ended up being the game. And then, you know, I think it was a good pass interference call, but it was a pass interference call that basically put – Atlanta in scoring position to kick a 58 yard field goal. Mm-hmm. Those are the two losses. So I'm, I'm high on new Orleans. I have a lot of futures on them. This just seems like, I don't know, but this could also be the classic. Like this is the problem with narrative betting, right? You pick a narrative. Mahomes is inevitable. It sounds sexy. You're I'm going to convince a bunch of people like damn Mahomes is inevitable. Well, let me hit you with the other counterpoint, which is Mahomes doesn't cover regular season games. And this is when he plays with his food and he's just going to limp through this game. And, you know, maybe they win by two, but you don't cover the five and a half. This is also a narrative, right? And I can see this scenario where the Saints do enough defensively to, sh- to slow them down. We've talked about the headwinds they have offensively. Um, all yeah. I can say is Mahomes does feel inevitable when you look at the data. Like it seems like he's the major data point. But the Saints, to me, are still an underrated team in the market that should in our numbers is highly rated and i think you should be getting a lot of uh a lot more support to be honest you mentioned something or you you said you said a key phrase in there and i want to focus on that as we as we turn the page here you, high variance seems like they're generally speaking in the league top to bottom there's a lot of 
Dude, high so variant much. stuff going on through the first four weeks of the season. So let's zoom out. Let's go to our EPA landscape here um, for the NFL and mentioned it real briefly too. Like the commanders are breaking this scale. Um, it's <laughs> it's just why it makes everyone else look a lot more average. So yeah, high variant stuff with the commanders and a rookie quarterback. We know historically that it's 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 difficult to not only kind of forecast rookie performance but also generally speaking it's difficult for them to do well and then you have someone like Jaden Daniels all of a sudden come in and just like annihilate that kind of you know standing notion so to speak. But yeah. um yeah, beyond that you, you you beyond that you've had you really haven't had in my opinion a super incredibly dominant team. Maybe if Maybe you want to say the Vikings, like, yeah, cool who enough. else? Yeah, who else for you guys is really like standing out other than, or who, who, let me rephrase, which team is is where they're at and like in the quadrant of elite here of those teams in the top right there? Where which one of those teams is there not because of high variance stuff in the quadrant of elite? Yeah, yeah, uh, all most of them. What do you mean? <laughs> like San Francisco is good. Baltimore's or Buffalo's good. We just talked about it. New Orleans, in my opinion, is good. Like if you if in the 15 game sample, all of those teams are in the quadrant of elite. Minnesota is starting to bump up there. Maybe the Jets. I don't I don't know. I, I kind of disagree with you there. I, the yeah, the okay. teams in the quadrant of elite, I think, are kind of teams that resemble the quadrant of elite going into the season. I'll give you some of the border like but he, but he is is are the jets like they were touted a lot like they're sexy not a sexy pick but a, you know everybody with was was touting them green bay to me very confusing but we had injuries at with love so i think that that that's going to shift some of their numbers um i i just no one is playing in my mind very certainly like you're just tampa bay looked good then they shit the bed against washington or uh, sorry, against Denver, um, you have Washington doing something that is makes zero sense. We're I'm gonna talk. We're gonna talk about it off the numbers here. Um, Baltimore looks good, but then they shit to get a bad against um, Baltimore. Baltimore looks shitty. Vegas, yeah. you know, you know, it, yeah. Vegas is a fucking weird one. Yeah, but you know, I think one thing for me, can you go back to the uh, the landscape there? The one thing I want to call out is you know we talk about quarterback play and how it, we're so quick to judge is a quarterback yeah. a bust or are they a, a great pick right cj stroud last year caleb williams this year um look at uh bryce young getting benched right but i, I want to talk about how fickle it is like your organization can really have the most dramatic impact i mean you look at the teams on the right side so above average offensive epa for play teams right sam Darnold and the vikings moved on look look at what they're doing yeah. Derek Carr, the Saints, moved on for Raiders. Look at what they were doing. Geno Smith at the Seahawks, moved on from the Jets. Look at what they were doing. Baker Mayfield and the, and the Buccaneers. Like this list goes on and on about these teams of quarterbacks who just their career is dead. They're not. They're not good quarterbacks. They're they're at bust or near bust level. And you put them on a new team, and all of a sudden, look at what they're doing. Justin Fields, right? So yeah. you know, it's just it, it it it's it's good to see. I love a good redemption story, um, but I just want to talk about like all that because you're going to hear all these rumors about Bryce Young trade and this and that. Um, the organization makes such a difference. Yeah, a hundred percent. I hope yeah. for his sake he does get traded. Yeah, so Miami honestly. Miami should trade for him right now. Mm -hmm. Right, that'd be wild. Miami needs to do something. I don't, I don't know if two is going to play or not, but yeah, I guess that's a good point. You you. If he if I'm he comes sure he back is. this season, then then that definitely changes your decision making because then you can look to draft somebody next year yeah. um, versus needing to fill something now. And maybe they're waiting for that. Maybe they maybe they don't know yet. Maybe. OK. All right. So that, that was kind of a high level overview. And unless you guys want to touch on anything with respect to the league there, I want to talk yeah. about the game plan there and stuff. OK. Yeah. One question for you guys. Where's Devontae okay. going? There's there's smoke. There's fire. These are uh, wild yeah. rumors out of pretty much it nowhere so i think they're real i think i think he's going to get traded i don't think the jets i think the jets makes the most emotional sense with 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 um rogers but i don't think it actually makes sense to trade for him based on what the team has they're not missing one wide receiver no of course not so i don't i don't think that's the trade so where does he go 
Chiefs? Do you think? Uh, do you think they? The Chiefs will have to overpay then to do an interdivision kind of a three situation. Peat. You you pay for the you mm-hmm. you overpay for the three P in my opinion. Yeah, I I think the Je- the Jets. I I, I kind of lean that way. You could trade Hassan Reddick. <laughs> the guy who hasn't played a snap for you, who just wants to be on a new team, new contract. Vegas seems like, but they're not. I mean, the Jets go. don't need. They're 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 not one wide receiver away. That's not their problem. Yeah, but don't tell that to Aaron Rodgers, who's who's probably running that. You know, running some aspect of that offense. You know. Anyway, I I I, I my vote is Jets. Yeah. Okay, all right, and that's where he goes. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think the 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 story is the the story there is the Jets or the Chiefs, but I think for me, because what I thought I saw was they were only looking for like a second round pick and some other conditional offer. I have undisclosed thing, something like was what I thought was fairly low. Well. Um, and I, but I only say that to say I think. Quite frankly, the market's wide open. Uh, whoever's really in need of a, of a receiver, uh, not not to give you a cop out answer, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it's it's a, it's a great gamble. I wonder. I'm, I wonder if there's yeah. odds for this. Any, is anywhere posting odds for a new team? I don't know. I haven't seen anything. The hey, zone. I don't. I don't know what this is. I mean, it should be it should be aligned with a lot of the IUK market, right? So it should be Washington, Pitt. Okay. New England, so I don't know I where they just, I don't know where they pulled this from. Odds provided by sportsbetting.ag. I don't know what 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 that is, but using this random site as the source of truth here, Jets are the favorite at uh one to three. I, dude, I'm telling I, look, the Chiefs and the I Ravens. Think you guys are I think that's why you guys are not GMs. Like it doesn't make sense. What 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 do you you already have Lazard? You already you already made him happy. You have Lazard, you have an old Green Bay Packers. Like they're the yeah, Jets do you, not, Adams over Lazar. No, but you're gonna have to trade equity for there. Like you're not. This doesn't make your team better. This doesn't take make your team better than they are currently. I mean, you make the same argument with the Saints. I let him back up with his college quarterback. He left Rogers for for a car in the first place, baby. Reunite him. <laughs> Go Bulldogs. Yeah, I I, I I would I would buy that argument better if you said Garrett Wilson, like, oh, you have this young, you know, wide receiver one, you already slip out of position, you know, whatever, whatever, Marshall Gain. But I think for me, and I'm not saying he's going to the Jets, but the reason I can buy that is one, I'm taking Devontae over Alan Zard any day of the week. Two, I think the asking price is for a team that's win now. Because your point about building for the future, you have Aaron Rodgers. You have a year, maybe two left anyway. I mean, New York's yeah, in a win now right. mode for Robert Sala's job. I mean, then we talk about this earlier in the year about Sala was the the well, the Jets were like what one of the favorites to odds wise to win the Super oh, yeah. Bowl, but then Sala was one of the favorites odds wise to, get, to, get to lose his job by the end of the year, right? So I right. think the pressure's on, and in that that organization, yeah. I think they would trade their soul, a la you know L.A. to to win one year and figure it out from there. Okay, I got one bit, but one one better for you, Baltimore. Okay, Baltimore Ooh. does feel like one wide receiver away to me. They got likely clicking on all cylinders. Bateman, maybe as a two. Wild. Okay. Devontae, I'm hey. Yeah. What about Zay hey. Flowers though? Yeah, yeah it's that Zay, Devontae, and Bateman. Yeah. Like, give it to me, baby. That would be wild. We'll all see. It for, sounds like all that for your... the, for for Lamar to throw a pick in the end zone to lose the game. <laughs> all that for them to win by to be winning by thirty, uh, but then somehow yeah, lose by to have a negative 10 percent pass rate over expected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll see. It sounds like news might be coming pretty fast on this, though, because a lot has been kind of developing pretty quickly. So we'll see. But... Or plot twist, full time Taco Bell employee. Maybe he, <laughs> he's he got a Taco well. Bell in his house. He could do well. Yeah. Hey, he doesn't have to drive far, does he? <clears throat> All right, you guys want to switch gears here? Let's talk about you want to you want to bring oh, back. Oh wait, the, whoa, 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 whoa. We oh, uh, you got some fake breaking news. Ah. Yeah, I'd have okay, to well, it. but there was a breaking tweet that said that Devonte has informed the team. He's requested a trade, but I don't know if it's real. I saw that. I but saw that prior sm- to us getting on. I think that fire. is. I think that is real. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so we'll see. We'll All right. Switching gears, though. You wanna you wanna revisit something that we introduced last week? In yeah, baby. Our, uh, let's talk about pass variants. funnels. Let's talk okay. about pass funnels. Talk about game plan variants. Yes. And let's talk about how to make some money. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, what do we know? Gino had a hell of a game through, I think, 55 times in that game. They basically didn't even I, when I, I literally was like, win, lose or draw. We 100 percent killed it like they ran, I think, 10 pass plays in a row to open up the game. I mean, they weren't even 
they kept on going empty backfield as far as formation. I was like, okay, perfect. They're going after yep. this hard. Um, I ended up betting over attempts as well as receptions, but nice. uh, both both obviously cash. Um, okay, so now we have our new yeah. Just just a reminder, we 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 gave out last week with this new Gino. with this new angle and model here. We gave out Geno Smith over twenty one and a half completions. Twenty one and a half completions. Yep, and I think he had thirty completions, mm-hmm. something like 30 that. something. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, and uh, all the all the members got that bet. Um, we'll probably end up doing complete if if there's value on com- uh, receptions. We'll probably also okay. throw in attempts from now on and, but. And, and seth maybe it might just be worth it just since it's kind of the second time going through yeah, this go over high, yeah high level kind of explain what this is what we're doing how what we're yep. thinking of and attacking this okay so uh we want to identify something called pass funnels you've heard us talk about it on this podcast earlier in the team but what we're looking at defensively is on the y-axis we're looking at how good a team is defensively against the rush so the Buff- buffalo bills are poor against the rush and the um, the Chargers are good against the rush. So um, up here, bad. Down here, good. Now on the x-axis is pass EPA. So how good you are defending the pass. Bad defenses are over here. Good defenses against the pass are over here. So you want to be in this quadrant. What we're trying to identify are pass funnels and run funnels. What a pass funnel is, the Green Bay Packers are a really good example. They are really good against the rush. Remember, they're negative EPA on defense against the rush. But they are average or below average against the pass this means that teams really struggle running the ball but actually have a lot of success throwing the ball meaning in theory teams should want to throw the ball more about those uh, against those teams now you can also have run funnels these are teams that are good against the pass but they're actually bad against the run these are teams where you're probably going to want to run more than you normally do to 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 take advantage of their their defense so what we do is we pair that with our offensive game plan variants. What we're looking for here is teams on the x-axis that are chasing matchups week to week. What's that mean? It means that their run rate and pass rate over expected are changing a lot week to week. So in our assessment, that means they are chasing these types of matchups. They are chasing run funnels and pass funnels, or they're at least trying to have a game plan that's going to optimize for those teams. So this week, we can't run the simulations yet. All of the clients will get these bets later in the week when we, we run the simulations to find value. Um, but right now, the, the places I'd be looking are Green Bay. You might consider these four teams as well, which is Miami, Detroit, Baltimore, and um, Indy. These four teams, we'll say these, Let's and we'll throw the Chiefs in there a little bit. We'll want to be looking at over receptions, over completions. We may look at yardage. We'll also look at receptions for the wide receivers, maybe some yardage for the wide receivers as well, because obviously if you're going to be throwing the ball more, you are, you're you going to have to throw it to somebody, right? So yeah. um, what we do is we pair that with the simulations we can do over at Unabated. Shout out Oda Unabated. Use code BTB to get five days free. But we load this up in their simulator. We can load in a blended average, and we look for EV. If it's EV there, it meets the pass funnel. And it's a team that is greater than average on the game plan variance. It is a bet for us. So that's how we're deriving this. We're really excited. Um, who does um, Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is a Cowboys. team. That, yeah, we play the Cowboys. And Pittsburgh is right on the edge here. So we were talking about earlier the Cowboys being a, a run funnel. We're definitely going to be eyeing a bunch of stuff for Fields here because this is a team that's for me is enough on the average of them chasing this, even though we know they're a team that uh, it runs a lot. They mm-hmm. might, they one, they're going to run the ball. So this is already a good setup, but they, I think they're going to chase this matchup a little bit. Um, so we'll be looking there for um, the Cowboys and then Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay plays Atlanta. Atlanta, you can see here is a team that does not chase game plan. They're not chasing game plan. Now in this case, the um, Atlanta Falcons are a, a run first team. So you may want to be looking at some of the rushing numbers um, for Atlanta as well, because Tampa Bay is a bit of a, of a run funnel. So yeah, those are, those are the ones, those are the ones to look at. Don't have any bets for you right now, but all the clients will get those um, when, once we run the simulations, really excited about this tool. Yeah. Yep. And, and Seth, would it be fair to say, going back to maybe ease some of the minds of the, the Steeler backers for, for potential field prop, we talk about them being right on the edge of, average for game plan variance but that's that's pretty screw uh screwed too but skewed as well uh for because of the packers and the dolphins given their quarterback injuries and all they've had to do to 
change their game plan for week to week. Is that fair to say? Yeah, fair to say for sure. For sure. If you were to if you were to exclude Green Bay, uh, the average will move over somewhere right here. But sure. e but even I'm less, you know, there's I don't I'll ease you a different way. You're you're really going you don't even need to see them be above average because you we don't need them to chase this matchup. If if they are just a team that is who they are, which is what the opposite of a high variance would be. Yeah. Well, this is a team that we know runs the ball 10 percent run rate over expected. And they're going up against a team that struggles with the rush. So, you know, you don't even need them to necessarily chase this game plan. It may just be like, oh, perfect. This is who we are. And this team sucks at defending it. Yes, sir. Definitely. Yeah, definitely another element or layer added to when we talked about past funnels last year. So we're 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 and week we're we're week, very excited about this. Week four was perfect. Our week one where we rolled this out. Why? There were two pass funnel defenses. It was Detroit and it was uh, Baltimore. Um, yeah, it was Detroit and it was Baltimore. And we did not bet on any of the pass funnel stuff for Buffalo. Why? Because Buffalo is a run first team and their game plans variance is below average, meaning this was data showing us this. They're not going to try to chase that pass funnel. And what do you know? They didn't. Precisely so instead right, of just blindly betting pass funnels where we would have probably went two and two. We ended up going one and zero or two and one, or depending on yeah. if you, you know got the completions aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. As as Seth mentioned, it's early in the week still. So in a couple of days, if any uh, members are listening to this, you'll be you'll be hearing from us on this. So shout out. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah, we're and excited this is to keep on the website. Um, just to let everybody know, for all the paid members, if you go to account and at the very bottom, maybe once you sign in, don't steal my password. Which is my password. Don't steal my password. Is my password. Um, it's right down here on NFL um, matchup, matchup analysis. analysis. Yep. Boom. Yep. All right. Good stuff as usual. Let's move on though. We got a second a second week again of this new part or segment that we're calling. We're calling it off the numbers here. So um, basically having a friendly competition amongst uh, amongst the three of us here. So. We each have a play that we're just going to give out and talk about why we like it and then prepare, talk shit, friendly competition, and see who can uh, kind of be top dog at the end of the season. And I guess we all kind of have our different different methods for this, I would say. You know, maybe a couple of us are using the model as a kind of a baseline or foundation or some sort of tangential uh, quantification tool, right? But then maybe some of us are just saying... Fuck it, I'm fading the model or because X, Y, and Z, you know. So it's kind of all over the board, but we'll 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 each give out a pick here and then kind of give our rationale as it as it goes here. So um I'll kick it off. I guess I I am going back to the well, baby. Last week I took commanders plus three and a half, four and a half, I believe it was. Um, and they won outright, so that was good. So I'm going back to the well. Slightly different variation, though. I am looking at the commanders and browns game, and I am rolling with the commanders. Uh, minus one and a half first half play and uh, yes we talked a little bit about basically washington breaking a lot of these charts and metrics and just just looking otherworldly right and yeah it's true and maybe maybe this is the quintessential like buying at the top and it's gonna you know regression is gonna hit I think there is a, admittedly there is a real possibility for that but my my thought process in thinking through this is if we put if we actually pull up i want to bring it back here can we pull up our um epa landscape here real quick can you have a more crazy juxtaposition here where washington is and then where the browns are um no. yeah the the browns the browns are absolute ass okay in every sense of the words browns are dookie and i i am hesitant to to Fade a team, basically, or let me rephrase. I'm 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 apt to ride the team that is hot and that is just breaking the the metric scales right now. It's very difficult for me to to see if Washington is going to come back down to earth, which I think they will inevitably. That they're going to do it this week against the Browns, who are a bottom um, bottom half of the league in terms of net you know net EP allowed, both rushing and passing. Um, and further to that, I think if they're going to regress, 
I'm just banking that it's not going to be in the first half. <laughs> I, it's one and a half. There was a two and a half pretty much everywhere else in the market. So and it's not a key number or anything, but um, it just seemed like coming back home against a struggling against a struggling Browns team that this was this just jumped off the screen to me. So the one that I this is this doesn't necessarily go into my my justification for this, but I want to just share this with you guys real quick. So on an EPA per drive basis. Washington is number one, and the Bengals are our number two. But the difference between the Washington Commanders and the Bengals at number one and number two is the same between number two and number twenty in e paper drive. This is how this is how nuts the Commanders are that have been on mm-hmm. on the on the offensive efficiency. It's it's bonkers. So again, maybe this is a quintessential buy high spot, and I'm gonna you know this is gonna come crashing down. But I, I, I like the matchup here, and I'm rolling with Commanders minus one and a half first half. Yeah, you are buying as high as you can possibly buy, and I'm selling it right to you. Give me the Browns plus three and a half. This is this is insane. When you you ask a lot of questions, I got some answers for you. Where what hey, we is, can middle this? There's there's a happy ending for both of us here. Oh no! I hope not. I hope I want Max Payne. <laughs> um, no, you, you're talking about what is going to slow down. You, 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 four weeks in, you've already forgot what slowed you down three weeks ago. Is a good defense, and what does the Browns have? You said they're dookie. Well, they're dookie offensively, but they're not dookie defensively. They're still good defensively. They're at least a little bit above average. I'll give you that. They're not world beaters like they were last year, but this is what we've seen this team be susceptible if you can pull it off. And we've seen that, for, unfortunately for the commanders, they're not doing this on offense with this really good defense. They're basically forcing everyone into a shootout, and they're winning those shootouts. What happens when you show them a good defense and you slow this game way down? In my opinion, I think this is the recipe where you see regression for a rookie quarterback. You see regression for a offense that is on an unsustainable pace. And you actually have a defense that is going to probably give the Browns dookie offense as you say some uh, some opportunities um and i think that three and a half that hook is really really key here um and i had to pay for it i had to pay a a 115 but i think i think it's a good bet um i'm happy to be on that side and i think that we're going to see a little bit of regression here from a rookie quarterback with a browns defense um and i think they're going to figure out what they did week one that gave them trouble and i think they're going to they're going to try to implement it okay well i Unlike you, I hope we're both right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, we could both win. That's fine. <laughs> All right, Steve. It's not as fun. Well, I hope you both lose. Uh, yeah, there so, you go. There, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, yeah. So uh, my pick is New Orleans Saints plus five and a half. I alluded to it earlier uh, in, in this uh, the podcast here. Really what I'm looking at here is we talked about it. Saints have been a good off, a great offense and a great defense over a larger sample, yes, we've had two games now where we had some wonky stuff, but this is a perfect scenario for the Saints to really sort of reverse course and get back to really who the data have shown that this team really is against a Chiefs team that is facing a ton of instability and unknown. Now, listen, I'm not discounting Patrick Mahomes. I would never do that, but I am saying there's enough uncertainty there that five and a hook seems pretty palatable to me, so that's why I'm taking Saints plus five and a half. Okay, let's roll it up. Let's bring it up on the screen for for the record here. So, uh, just I just want to you know, I guess I might as well talk my shit while I can. You never know what's yeah. going to happen. But yeah, yeah. Did either of you guys win last week? No. Oh, over. Okay. All right, over. All right, that's one. That's I'll just leave it at that. All right, move on. Moving on. Regulating the schedule program, it baby. Last part of the show. We got model predictions for NFL Week Five here. So let's bring it. Let's bring up the card. It was unfortunately again another. It, w- it was a down week for the model last week. Um, I think one in three, if I'm not mistaken. So we're yeah. sitting at sitting at fifty percent, ten and ten exactly on the dot here. So um, should have been a safety. Should have been a safety. Oh, yeah. let's not Jeez. go there. Let's oh not my go gosh. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't. Yeah, <laughs> rough, rough, rough in these streets. But yeah, sitting at fifty percent for the model. But again, you know, our projected win rate is fifty five percent. So there's nowhere near. Nowhere near the sky is falling or anything like that. We've we've seen time and time again that you're gonna have weeks where you lose, you're gonna have months where you lose, but you know, process oriented, not results oriented in one or two weeks. So yeah. And the the I have to say, like the the market 
we're not seeing as much CLV. And I'm really like, this is, I mean, we've bet 20 games. You yeah. Know? So like, we, it's a very small sample size. We're, we're just about to be a quarter, not even a quarter of the way through. I mean, there's so much left We we aren't seeing a lot of CLV, but there's a lot of variance going on in the league right now. So I don't know if that's, a function of it. I think in the NFL, though, to be successful, I think you, you're mandatory. You're going to need to see CLV on at least 51%. Like, you need that little bump of, like, you have some edge in the market. So, I think this is a really key week for us because we're betting, like, a lot of key numbers. Like, yeah. we're literally, we need, you know, we're, we're are we going to see the three? We saw early um, Minnesota get to three. It got bought back. Um, Obviously, London game. So, that one's interesting. We're on the seven and a half. For Arizona, or are we going to see that get to seven? I think that would be a really important um, signal for us. And then there's already been some buying and selling for the Ravens. This has got to three, come back to two and a half. It looks like it's headed back to three, but I think we're going to want to see at least in two of these three games that we see them go through the key number and get to the key number. Can I get? I want. I want to get. I want to have a quick discussion on this real quick about about CLV being mandatory. I don't. I don't disagree. But I. But what are your thoughts on? Are you guys' thoughts on how much more efficient can this market get, especially especially for openers? Um, to the point about not seeing a lot of CLV. I. I would be curious to know and haven't tracked this myself, but how much line movement is actually going on in the league from open to close, and is CLV even? gettable basically in the aggregate now of course game to game you know you're gonna have injury news yeah. you know, you're gonna have the standard yeah. stuff that that's gonna probably move lines here or there but we're we're betting into the most liquid the most efficient market in the u.s maybe maybe the world so so is this a situation and this question has come up like on some of our socials and whatnot like how long do you actually expect your edge to last right when you when you build models and things like that so I get, again, open-ended question, like, is it feasible or how feasible do you think it is that the market has gained some sort of level of efficiency and CLV will be harder to come by? Uh, at close, I think that's a, a, a war we, we know we can't win. But what's happening right now is we're just, by and large, getting there's better numbers at close than what we bet at open. That's like the opposite of what you want. We're not even seeing like price, you know, go in our in our favor, let alone the number. Um, that's actually why I say CLV is mandatory in the NFL. I think it's so efficient, so liquid that I don't think without it, I think with you, you need to see that signal or I don't think you have a shot in hell. I think college is enough wild, wild West and enough volume and enough, just not as liquid that I think you can get away with introducing new things to the market. I mean, we're seeing our models actually fairly competitive at close now um which we wouldn't even dare mention that about the nfl like our model eats shit at close but right now i wouldn't say it's eating shit at open but it's just the market is not buying large agreeing with us as far as a, a majority of our plays sure i think i think we've seen clv on about 50 percent of our plays and what do you know we we're going 50 percent yeah 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 just 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 kind of an Small anecdotal yeah, again, you mentioned 20 games that we've that we've bet yeah, into officially. So we forecast we'll bet another 65 games. Yeah. Yeah. So and time will tell. Three of them. Yeah. And 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 sorry, just just in case I miss it too, let's pull up the model plays real quick and then just yeah. Seth, can you rattle off the yep. the three that we got going into week five here? Yep. Yeah. So we are on Vikings minus two and a half, minus one ten, Ravens minus two and a half. We're shopping for a, a, a one ten. We I don't know. Did anybody get it yet? Um, you guys have it? Is it available? Yeah, looking, looking right now, I see no one tens available yet. Nope. What were you gonna say, Steve? Oh, I, I, I just pulled the one fifteen, but yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll just say one fifteen. All right. So the model is, uh, we are on Vikings minus two and a half. We're not able to get the one and a half. It's moved too fast, but we are on minus two and a half, minus one ten. Ravens minus one fifteen at minus two and a half. It is a play. We are waiting to see if we can get it a uh, 110, but we have bet the 115 as well. Um, and then Arizona plus seven and a half minus 110. Uh, those are the plays for week five. All right. Shout out. So let's hope we get back in the win column. Who knows? Why not? Let's go three and oh. Although the, the Cardinals one scares the shit out of me. Not gonna lie. 
but Re- really did you watch the um the san francisco new england game i did not get a chance to i see think we would have covered that game there were two huge um mm-hmm. turnovers that led to touchdowns well, where they six, i know right and yeah. san francisco got it in like the red zone like so without those turnovers i'm not sure that um that they that they cover and quite frankly i think that arizona is going to be able to run the ball um i i don't disagree that it's gross but this this doesn't feel like it has in the past like this is a slam dunk san francisco is going to cover by a million i will give you that i will concede that so all right we'll see let's hope for three no weekend though boys should be a fun one appreciate everyone being here again Please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're here every week trying to trying to break down and give nuance to the NFL betting landscape for you guys. So, again, appreciate y'all being here. We will be back next week. See y'all again. Good luck this weekend with your bets. Talk to you soon. Scroll.